Let's continue to read Amos chapter 7. Locust, fire, and a plume line. This is what the Sovereign Lord showed me. He was preparing swarms of locusts after the king's share had been harvested and just as the second crop was coming up. When they had stripped the land clean, I cried out, Sovereign Lord, forgive! How can Jacob survive? He is so small. So the Lord relented. This will not happen, the Lord said. This is what the Sovereign Lord showed me. The Sovereign Lord was calling for judgment by fire. It dried up the great deep and devoured the land. Then I cried out, Sovereign Lord, I beg you, stop. How can Jacob survive? He is so small. So the Lord relented. This is what, this will not happen either, the Sovereign Lord said. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing by a wall that had been built true to plume with a plume line in his hand. And the Lord asked me, what do you see, Amos? A plume line, I replied. Then the Lord said, look, I am setting a plume line among my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. The high places of Isaac will be destroyed and the sanctuaries of Israel will be ruined. With my sword, I will rise against the house of Jeroboam. So he is setting a mark. It's like setting something that he, these people have knowingly and willingly crossed. They have knowingly and willingly got to a portion of their life where they were more willing not to worship the Lord or follow his commandments. They were wanting to do what they wanted to do. They wanted to worship who they wanted to worship. They wanted to do detestable things, which was not following the commandments. And so they didn't quite understand why things were happening the way they were, why they were making enemies, why nations around them were no longer wanting to be like them, but wanting to destroy them. And so much so that they were committing all kinds of horrendous acts. Even people that were following the way, following the Lord, worshiping, were being... uh, mistreated. So the Lord was seeing this and said, I, I, this line has, it's like this line has been crossed. It's been crossed so many times. I will no longer ignore this fact, this fact that they have broken the covenant. The covenant was to follow the commands and they had not done so over and over again. They were being stubborn, complicit, hard-headed, and wanted to continue down the path of destruction. They were destroying themselves. And the Lord did not want to see that for his people, for the people. So he said, this is what he said. The high places of Isaac will be destroyed and the sanctuaries of Israel will be ruined. With my sword, I will rise against the house of Jeroboam. He's going to do what's got to be done to promote, to help, and to heal these people. To have them understand who the Lord is, who the Good Shepherd is. Because they had just continued to fall and continue to go down the path of destruction. Bringing past to present. This could be a difficulty when we see someone that is leading themselves down that path, whether it's a loved one, like a family member, or someone you know, um, like uh, could be a coworker or friend, or someone, an acquaintance, somebody more than acquaintance that you know of, that you see just going down a path of self-destruction. We can think of it in many different ways as well. We can also think about when people become self-defeated. We can also think about when people self-sabotage. Has, have you been in, an, in a situation where you thought that 
the going could not be so successful because there was too many signs that it wasn't going to be right. There was just too many things that you saw that were too familiar to you that was leading to devastation or catastrophe or things just not going your way or not going right, whether it's for the day, whether it's for the week, whatever it may be, to the point where you could end up causing your own self-sabotage, which is doing things to help prevent the better outcome that you would, would have liked. You could end up being swallowed up in that feeling of no hope when we do have hope. We do have hope in our Lord and Savior. So lean on him. Lean on him. See that for others too. Offer that assistance. Offer that help. Even if it's just a prayer. Amen and hallelujah. We have the good shepherd and he's always at work. And asking him to do something for you. It's nothing to him. He is God. He is the creator of all. He never sleeps. Before we go on, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think?